Hey, Revive Youth Ministry, it's Theo again, coming into our new series, Slow Your Roll. So to start off, I wanted to think of uh, a time when I moved a lot in my life. So my mom, um, for different reasons, we moved a lot. Um, I went to different schools, and so usually when we had to move, it was in a pinch. We need to get out by Friday, and it's already uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, which is not a lot of time to pack and move. And so, uh, having it, whenever I moved, I got it ingrained in my system that we needed to move quickly and efficiently. Now, even though I had this kind of ingrained in me, my brother moved at a different pace than I did. And so this always caused conflict when it was time for us to move to a new place, just simply because of the fact that we're now moving and we have a deadline and we need to get things done. And my focus was on getting things moved. His focus was, I don't really want to do this, so I'm going to rest as much as I can and take breaks frequently. And so one of the things that would always happen is that we would have to move this heavy piece of furniture, um, like a solid oak dresser. Now, solid oak is a heavy piece of furniture, which means that it usually takes two people to do. And so I would grab uh, the one end, and I would usually be the person going backwards, and my brother would be the one that's going forwards. Well, the person that's going backwards should be the person that's setting the tempo on how fast you move, just simply because if you go too fast, then what's going to happen is that the person is going to tumble over, trip, and the items are going to fall on them. But if you go too slow, then it's just daunting and it's kind of like you're tripping up on yourself because you're moving too slow and it's like you're tugging, trying to get the piece of furniture to come to you. Well, what would end up happening is that I would get to moving and even though I'm the one that's supposed to set the pace, my brother would act super sluggish and he would go real slow, taking his time, eating up the day. And so... I'd be like, no, hurry up, you're going too slow. And so then he would get anxious and get mad because he didn't want to be working in the first place. And so he would try to find a reason to get out of it. And so what would happen is that he would then say, okay, and then he would just start to push as fast as he can as I'm going backwards and then I'm tripping. And even though I didn't injure myself or fall, it then started an argument which resulted in me just going and getting a furniture dolly and moving a lot of the items by myself. Yes, it was more difficult that way, but I was able to move at my own pace. I went to a theme park with Kayla, her mom, and um, one of her friends uh, one year when I was in high school. And so we went to this theme park and Kayla was super excited. Uh, we get into the theme park. She's moving at high speed. She's all, pr almost like running to the different rides because she's so excited to be at the theme park and they get moving. And I'm just moving at a regular pace. And it's like, just, hey, wait a second. Slow down. Don't you just want to hang out with us? We're here. We're coming as a group. We're going to get to the rides. Just take a break. We're going to be here all day. Sometimes we need to slow down and uh, move or work with other people. We cannot expect people to move at our pace at all the times because some people have limitations. They can't always move the same way that we can move. We need to slow our roll and move with the people we're supposed to move with. We often get so focused on what we need to do and where we need to go that it's difficult for us to just slow down. But we must be careful to not become so task or time oriented and leave the people behind. As Christians, it's not uh, just people that we do this with, but we also need to be intentional about the time that we apply with God. We need to make sure that we're not moving too fast or moving ahead of what God has planned for us. We need to walk with God. So over the next few weeks, we'll be talking about how we can slow our roll. We need to stop and rest. Be careful to not get ahead of God and sometimes patiently wait for him to move. So I believe uh, that what you do does matter to God. So if you're going out and doing a bunch of bad things or doing things that are not in his will, those things do matter. It also matters that you're doing things that you're supposed to be doing. These things matter. But I believe we should 
uh, also focus on the things that we are not doing. So I believe that we should work hard because everything we do is an offering to God. I think most Christians accept this because doing things is easy because we're like, okay, if I go to church, it's pleasing to God. If I help this person, it's pleasing to God. And so we naturally accept these things when we're following Christ. However, I think the most Christians miss that what we don't do also matters as well. God doesn't want you to just go, go, go all the time. He wants you to stop and rest. He wants you to take a break, which means that you're not doing anything, but it still matters because he wants you to rest. So we're going to go back to the Old Testament uh, to look at that. Go back to the olden days. We're actually going to go back um, as old as it gets. We're going to the beginning. And we're not going to the very beginning of Genesis, but we're going to Genesis 2, 1 through 3. And it says, So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. So God didn't need to break. He is the creator. He is all-powerful. But on the seventh day, he essentially creates napping or rest. Because we need it physically, mentally, and spiritually. Rest is so important that the all-powerful God took a day of rest to show us the way that we needed to live our lives. And it's not just something that he demonstrated, but he commanded us to do it. He drew our attention to command in a special way to do or not to do things to act and rest. So I don't know if you know this, but the Old Testament has 613 laws or rules. That's a lot of laws. And after you get past a certain point, it's like, I don't really remember all of this. And so what God did was uh, he came to Moses and he created what is called the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments is kind of like the Sports Weekly, the top ten uh, plays. It's taken all that has happened within the uh, sports life and it's taking ten key moments. So even if you didn't see all of this or learn all of this, as long as you know these ten things, you should be good to go. So in Exodus 20. 8 through 11, it says, Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for the ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest, dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigner living among you. For six days, the Lord that made the heavens, for six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. So you have the Ten Commandments, but the Ten Commandments can actually get divided up into two different sections. And it is the vertical, our relationship with God, and the horizontal, the relationship with others. The first four are regarding our relationship with God, which that is the vertical. And the last six are regarding our relationship with humans, the horizontal. If the vertical is out of whack, the horizontal is most likely going to be out of whack as well. And if the horizontal clearly isn't right, it's a great indicator that your vertical relationship isn't doing so hot either. Because the more that we get closer to God, the more we get closer to others. And if we're not close to others and we have issues with connecting with people, it's usually because our relationship with God is out of whack. In order to have our vertical relationship with God in order, 
We don't worship any gods before God. Which is, by the way, isn't just physical idols or false deities, but anything we might place before God. So, this is a difficult one. I know, especially if you're a sports player or someone that's in theater, those type of things take a lot of our time. I mean, right now, there's a break on it. But when we're in sports, if we're putting sports and practices before our relationship with God, whether it is you coming to church and getting your uh, information from there and then reading some at home or just reading at home, if you put sports before them, then it's like you're having these idols. You're putting things before God. We also don't make physical idols and we don't misuse his name or take his name in vain. And we keep a Sabbath to rest, which allows us to dedicate time to God. I think when we're looking at the Old and uh, Old Testament, it's important to really study what's going on here so we know how we should be applying it. So there's a misconception, uh, two misconceptions that happen with the Old Testament. The first misconception is that the Old Testament is irrelevant. And so then we tend to uh, not really look at it. We skip to the New Testament saying this is what our life is supposed to be like. New Testament all the way. The other misconception is that everything in the Old Testament is the way that we should live our lives. It's neither of those. It's actually a combination of both. We're supposed to be focused on the New Testament moving forward so it's not completely uh, irrelevant or it's not, com it's still, uh, we're supposed to still be living our lives based off of some principles in the Old Testament, but we're supposed to also be moving forward. So it's a combination of the two. So the big thing when we study building our relationships with him is that we need to know the information so that way we can decipher what stuff is relevant and what stuff isn't relevant. We need to be in obedience to God, which in 2 Timothy 2.15 is telling us that we are to study his word. It's a direct command. So let's study here a bit uh, so we can correctly understand and explain the Sabbath and the rest. The way I like to study is called inductive study. So the first thing is, who is saying this? Well, that's easy because it's God that is telling us uh, these Ten Commandments. He told Moses uh, to write these specifically down. And even though the Bible is God-inspired, this particular item is specifically from God. The next thing that we have to question is, who are they speaking to? And so uh, they're speaking to the Israelites at this point, but it's also anybody that is worshiping God in that time. What did God say? He said to the people, were to rest from work or cease from their working. They may work for six days, but the seventh is a day of rest. So let's define rest a little bit better. Rest doesn't mean that you are sleeping in until noon every day in your pajamas, doing nothing. But rest is primarily... Um, rest is not just a primarily a physical aspect. They were being commanded to stop or cease from their work to come to rest. Why? Well, there's physical benefits to having rest. We get rejuvenated through our rest. And even though uh, it's physical rest is what's needed, God command wasn't primarily for their physical rejuvenation. It is rest from one thing to another. So it's taking a break from one thing to then focus on another. When you go away from something, you're usually going to something new. 
So if I'm leaving work, I'm going home, and even though I'm going to the aspect of rest, I'm usually going to go and watch TV or I'm going to do something else outside of work. So here we have uh, resting from work. So what takes its place? What are we resting to? We are resting to God. This is a spiritual practice. To rest means to cease one's work and rest in and reflect on God and his blessings. So we're not just going and doing nothing, but we are uh, dedicating our rest to the Lord, remembering all he has done for us in creation. This is one reason why, but we need to find out what else God says about Sabbath or rest. We need that deeper why. The why behind the why. Because we're not reading for information. We're reading for life change. So let's jump over to the next time God brings us Sabbath. Because he actually gives us reasoning. Which is Exodus 31, 12 through 13. The Lord then gave these instructions to Moses. Tell the people of Israel, be careful to keep my Sabbath day. For the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant between me and you from generation to generation. It is given so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. So why do we keep the Sabbath? We keep the Sabbath because it is an act of remembrance of him. We're looking at the blessings that he has done. So like Sundays when it comes around outside of our Sunday service and everything else, it's the aspect of uh, relaxing and seeing all that he has done. Because it's easy to get caught up in when things are not going right or the bad. But there's a lot of blessings, even in the bad, that come to us. We may be stuck at home right now, but we are coming closer to our families. We have Many of us still have shelter. We, many of us still have food. We're still healthy. There's a lot to look at and remember what God has done for us. And not to just remember what God has done for us, but who he is as a whole. It is setting aside for a holy purpose or bringing them into relationship with himself. It's not going to depend on what they're doing. A person's value isn't going to be determined by what he or she does. It's all going to be through God. So they've got to unplug from the world and plug into him. We have to unplug from the world and plug into him. That's what Sabbath is meant to be. Is more than just rest is more than just sitting and watching Netflix and binging it all day. But it's to become about God, about who He is and what He has done. So we move to Deuteronomy uh, five fifteen, and it says, "Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out with His strong hand and powerful arm." That is why the Lord your God has commanded you to rest on the Sabbath day. They were to keep the Sabbath to take time to reflect on how they were once slaves trapped in Egypt until God, his mighty hand and his outstretched arm interfered with the course of mankind and rescued them. So they were in bondage, they were slaves, and God said, hey, I'm going to deliver you. Remember what I have done for you. Rest. Cease your work. Remember what God did in the beginning. The work of creation. Remember what he did when he interfered with the course of human history to save you. The work of redemption through Jesus dying on the cross. Remember that he is continuing to intercede for you. Change you into who he has created you to be and give you full life. We take a break from what we're doing and what we think we're accomplishing to step back and see what God has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. So what does it mean, and how are we going to apply it? Well, I believe it means that rest is important because it allows us to really worship and reflect on who God is and what God has done. So how should I change my life? How should you change yours. I think we need to slow down a bit. We need to slow our roll. So let me 
run through a quick series of questions and you don't have to raise your hand especially since this is a recorded video but I want you to think about this including work or school how many of you have something that you must work on on Mondays Tuesdays Wednesdays Thursdays Fridays Saturdays Sundays now how many of you feel exhausted well, with us being out of school and some of us being out of work, we may not feel as exhausted. But when we're in school or we're uh, doing different things, we tend to feel exhausted because we're constantly doing things. What I see is that a lot of us are overextended. We're always working both at uh, work, at home. We're always connected on our computers and smartphones. And we're tired. We keep... We can't skip school or work just because we're tired. We can't skip our games or concerts because we committed to them. We can't skip our chores because our parents are committed to our doing them. But we're so tired that we probably are going to skip something. I've been on the go and my mom reminded me, uh, throughout uh, this week she said that this whole taking a break is actually good probably good for me because I have always been someone that is on the go moving 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 when I first uh, started with the church um, I knew that my goal was to work with youth work with you guys and so with it, when I came in, I instantly started to volunteer to work with the youth group. I got my membership extremely fast because I felt that it was important to jump in, build relationships, so that way I could take on this role. And so even though I didn't take it on right when I came in uh, to take over the youth program, I did take it on the next chance that it took place, when it was open. From there, I became a foster parent. I still worked 40 plus hours at the general because um, I was still there. Um, I was working on becoming a substitute teacher. I was still in school working on my bachelor's. And so I had all these things always taking up my time, continuously building and building and building. And then upward season came around and I became a coach, but I didn't just become a coach of one team. I became a coach of three teams. So then I'm going to the church three days a week on top of the other items I needed to do. So it, I'm almost at the church every single day doing something to stay busy, to continue to impress. And every time uh, something opened up where they needed someone. So I'm also cleaning the church, um, time just kept going by and by and I became exhausted and I wasn't just exhausted for myself but I was causing exhaustion within my family as well because I was so torn doing everything I partially forgot about all he had done and partially couldn't care less about what he had did because it wasn't that I was just like you know what I don't care about what you think God but in the busyness of everything it can cause more tension and cause crankiness that we don't remember all that he's done. We're just focused in the now. The here and the now, this is what's going on. And something has to give because we're exhausted, we're tired. There was a lot of times that I acted before asking God, is this what I'm supposed to do? I didn't ask him for water. I didn't ask him to do th things. But by doing so, it started to result in more of a burned out feeling. I wasn't invincible like I may have thought I was. I did need rest and I needed to rest in the God who loved me and wanted to get me out of that mess and into his perfect plan in my life. This is why I'm adamant now about rest. I make no secret of it either. I remember asking uh, questions um, whenever I take on a new position. I always ask, well, what type of commitment is this going to be? How much time? What is your expectation? So that way now I can make a educated decision of, yes, this is something that I can do. 
I remember thinking of like the whole sports ministry and it was like, it's probably something that I could do, but it sounds like a lot of work. I don't know if I can do that. When it was a toss up between, um, do I join with youth ministry or do I try to take on this role? That was one of the things that I kind of asked. And even though certain things continue to build up, I'm constantly shedding off different things. It's why I uh, take a break from things. I put limits on a new task. And if I'm going to take on a new task now, I'm trying to get rid of something else. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to Jesus, and he will provide rest. Slow your roll. Make time for God. Cease from your constant working and worrying and running. He will give you rest. Resting will allow you to be in communion with him. And you will be able to worship him properly. Remember what God has done. You were once slaves in sin, but God interfered with the course of mankind with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and sent Jesus to be set free. And he sanctifies you and makes you holy and brings you into relationship with him. Yes, you should work hard. This is this whole concept of Sabbath doesn't mean that you shouldn't work hard. But you also need to rest hard so you can worship hard. Because, the, like I said, the Sabbath is an aspect of coming into communion with Him. You're taking rest from your work, your, your, the hustle and bustle. So that way you can shift your focus from that to Him. It doesn't mean just go and sleep all day and binge watch Netflix. It means come into communion with Him. Create that larger bond with Him. So if you're seeing this prior to our Sunday Zoom, we will be meeting at 5 p.m. for our Zoom meeting. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about this. I have some questions that go with it to get us to thinking about how we can slow our roll. Stay tuned for the rest of this series, and I look forward to next week.